Well, hi there, thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel. Jose Quinones, the CNC dude here with yet another project, except that today I'm not gonna work on a project. Um, some time ago, one of, my, uh, one of our viewers, DMH Leather, asked if I could take a tour of inside the panel of the PNC, PCNC 1100. I think it's a good idea to see how the pros do it. You know, how they have wired everything together, the control board, the drivers, and uh, everything which pretty much controls the mechanics in question. So let's take a look, but before we go there, please allow me to tell you that my arms are not CNC actuators, so please excuse the shakiness that is gonna follow from now on. Let's see. As we approach the panel, we're gonna notice a few things. Of course, there is the control panel with a bunch of buttons, and this has changed. Um, since then, this is a Series 2 machine, and if, if you're purchasing one of the new machines, it's going to be a Series 3, so clearly it's going to look different than this, you know, they have added a meter and they have changed some of this stuff. But here's the start button, here's the emergency, right now it's pressed, but by the way, I, I flip the fuse because um, in case I get moronic enough as to touch something where there might be uh, 220, it is always better to play safe. Uh, here's an accessory port. What I connect in here, uh, you could, there are different accessories that you can connect. Uh, at some point in time, I was connecting my duality lathe, and this port would have controlled the speed of the duality lathe, and now I use it to control, um, no, actually, that will be on the other side. My apologies, the fourth axis doesn't go here. The fourth axis doesn't go here. I think this is only for the duality lathe. Spindle lockout, if you want to ensure that the spindle is not uh, going to start on you or something. The RPMs, I have never used this to be honest, I just basically control it through uh, Mac 3. Manual, I guess that's for the uh, RPM. Um, basically, now it's an automatic, so I control the RPM obviously with Mac 3. And in here you will control the spindle, start and stop, forward reverse. So all of this is for the spindle, but right now I am just using Mac 3. So this stuff is in auto. The coolant. It's, uh, you can either disable it, put it on auto so Mac 3 controls it, or you can uh, put it on. Right now, because of the heat in Texas, um, my coolant is drained, so I have to put more water. And then, of course, in here you turn the computer on and off. It's always on because I control the computer externally. So I hardly ever do anything with this panel other than starting the machine and the, um, the, uh, the emergency stop, which is how I disable it first. And here are uh, two keys. Basically, the spindle lockout requires a key. Obviously, uh, you know, this is one of those things where you want to make sure that if you do something, something, uh, somebody cannot come on your back and, um, and uh, change it without you knowing. So basically, you remove the key and now you're safe. This is a, a personal CNC machine, so my, this, I'm the only user. If this was on a on a machine shop and there were people coming in and out using the same piece of equipment, I can see the value of this. So for me it's just, it's just, uh, I never use it, so it's hanging there. This key, however, is important if you want to go in, you're going to have to flip it. And now we can see what's inside. Okay, as I open up the, uh, whoa. Hey, are you recording the video or am I recording the video? Ah, alright, I'll continue recording the video. What do we have here? Uh, there are a few boards and, and important parts that we uh, we can take a look at, but let's take an overall look of the whole panel. Those are the stepper drivers. I'm not certain what that is. It says control transformer, and I imagine some of those are relays or some kind of um, yeah, relays, relay sound. Oh, fuses. Those are fuses. Uh, and that is EMI filter. That is the EMI filter. It says machine tool control transformer. Machine tool control transformer. So I imagine those are the ones that take the 220 and step it down so that we can generate uh, the 72 volts that operate the steppers. Those are 72 volts um, stepper drivers. And I have four. The machine came with three for X, Y, and Z. And then I added, when I purchased the um, the fourth axis, it came with the uh, separate driver, of course. And these are, uh, let's see if I can by any chance, I think, 
3737 micro step driver. I think they're from Lichine. They're 72 volts and they can do like 8 or 9 amps. Ridiculously powerful drivers. By the way, at work I am designing a stepper driver that can do um if you want 100 amps, be my guest. Although I never I've never seen of a a stepper that requires that much current. There are some fuses back here, not certain for what. And ah, uh, that looks like an like a, an AC to DC contraction, some kind. The most important one would be this guy. This is the guy that takes the all of the signals from uh, from the parallel port and Mac 3 and spreads them out. Uh, so basically, this is the controller. Very pretty, organized. And the other most important is this guy, the Emerson Industrial Automation Spindle Controller. Basically, what happens is that uh, to articulate your three-phase BLDC motor, we need a, a, a hefty driver, and that will be this guy. I'm also designing three-phase drivers at work. Look at that. What are the odds? Um, and then, if we look at, uh, we follow our wires, we can see how the panel is wired. Some of this wiring has changed as the machine has been used because whenever I add something uh, when you buy a kit from Tormac they will come with new cables and new numbers and the instructions are extremely well written so they will tell you which wire to remove and discard and which wire to replace so some of the wires in here I actually had to change uh, if we look at these two connectors in here down here I think this is the one for the fourth axis. So I actually had to add this connector and if you, uh, you can see that this um, This plastic is loose because I just have not been able to put it back, but it's okay. It's no biggie uh, But it goes back to the panel because something has to happen on, uh, on the panel. I don't remember exactly the details, but I had to remove some wires put new wires And like I said everything is so well documented that is really, uh, it's very doable, it's not like, oh my god, I'm gonna mess up with my machine here, I mean, it may, I never see it operating. Uh, they actually done a great job at documenting everything and making it very uh, simple to follow. But then again, as you can see, there is really not that much in here. It's only basically uh, drivers and some AC to DC or AC to AC conversion, and then the control board and the driver for the spindle. So, that's pretty much it. Uh, can you build this yourself? Hey, uh, the guys at Tormax are humans and like people like to say in my country they use the toilet equally as you so Equally as everybody want, uh, every one of us so Anybody can build a CNC machine. That's no no problem Now you have an idea of how the pros did it so you can copy some of their um, Their techniques Very well routed very well routed and this piece of plastic is nothing, just something that I was using to hold the camera for my previous joke. Hopefully you didn't find my previous joke to be too annoying. Well here you go, this was a quick tour on how the pros have built uh, the electronics or the, ele the uh, electric components surrounding a CNC machine. You know, if you want to build your own CNC machine, you can find most of these components either on your local electronics or electric, electric supply distributor or even easier through online distributors. So go for it, Build, get that CNC machine built because it's an excellent project and it's very rewarding. Thank you for watching this video, keep tuned because there is more to come on. So I'll see you next time.